Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make 3D printed terrain using my Ender 3 FDM printer. There are a lot of people out there that don't really like the 3D printers amongst the crafting community, but I for one see them as an incredibly useful tool. Why not get these going? It ends up actually being a lot cheaper in the long run than half of the crafting materials that we use to build things from scratch. These models come from printable scenery and are a part of their Warlock set. I'll be making two models in this, one being the Warlock's residence and the other being the Arcane Dome. Once I have the model downloaded, I throw it into Cura and slice it up. Then I transfer this over to my Ender 3. This is a great printer and does a good job of giving me all of the terrain that I need. And after a couple of days worth of printing, I have the base pieces for the tower which I give a prime using a cheap grey spray paint that I get from a local hardware store, Bunnings. Spraying from side to side as to not glug up the paint and leave drips on my model. Once this has had time to dry, I grab out the Tamiya Colors Sand Spray Paint. I love this stuff because it's one of the few spray paints I can find around here that have a matte finish. This is perfect for all of the sandstone brick that I want to use in these models. So I cover all of the brickwork with this paint and then leave it out in the sun to dry. I'll note not to leave it out too long because heavy sun will melt and malform these plastic models. I gave all of the stone base work a coat with the Vallejo Game Air Cold Grey. A quick coat of this helps to separate it from the sandstone walls and give a little bit more variation in our model. Also adding a rough grey paint on the base of the second floor in case you're looking up from a lower angle. After this I used a silver base over all of the clockwork in the top level of the tower to highlight the mechanical function. I then got out a couple of different copper paints from Citadel to cover all of the metal areas and trimming on the tower, which came out really nice against the sandstone edges. This was by far the longest part of this build. There are a lot of these metal trimmings around the building that really took quite a bit of time to get through, especially the smaller detailed areas. Admittedly, I painted it fairly rough with a lot of edges overrunning onto the sandstone, but I still love the end result. Next up was to paint the dome itself. I coated this all with a lead belcher silver from Citadel and then came back in with those same coppers to add a few extra highlights and details. Then I took my time going around the roof, adding the copper paint onto all of the nails sticking out of the top of this dome. And once I was done with the nails, I came back in with that same colour and highlighted the edges of all of these areas along the top that can open up and reveal the inside of the dome. And while I was working on the tower, I was also printing the Warlock's residence. This building was significantly bigger than the tower, so it took quite a while to get all of the pieces printed. I think all up there was about a week worth of running the ender to get all of these bits and pieces ready to go. But once we had them, it was time to take them outside and give them the same basic paint with the fiddly bits grey primer that I used earlier. I'll mention it again because it's very important that when you're using spray paints on these kind of models to try and move the spray can back and forth sending small bursts of paint as to not really drench your model and leave a whole heap of drip marks that can ruin the detail and ultimately really get in the way of your final result. Once the primer's dry, I'm coming back in with that same Tamiya sand spray paint as I really want to continue the same theme between both of these buildings, making it look like they're built from the same materials. And now that we have the first level printed, it's time to get painting. I'm gonna be coming back in with that same silver that I used in some of the elements on the tower to highlight the fan in the base and a few other elements around the edges of these buildings. The original plan for this was for it to be a base and then to coat it with the copper. But I ended up liking it as it was, 
And then when I started testing out the copper directly onto the sand spray paint with some of these dragon facades on the front, I was quite happy with how they turned out. So ultimately, I got a bit lazy and never came back to finishing off that silver interior. The copper came out nice and strong against the sand colour. And seeing as there is so much copper to be painted onto this, it was good to not have to do multiple layers of silver and then copper. Then repeating this across all of the other mirrored areas on the other side of the building. There will be a lot of repeating the same process throughout this build, as the entire thing is essentially covered with small details that I want to bring out that copper metallic element in. And again, painting these quite rough, not really minding when I spill over the edges, as it is a terrain piece and it doesn't really need to be perfect. And once I'm done with all of these copper elements on the first floor, it's time to move on to the most annoying part of this entire build, all of these window frames. They took a lot of time to get through over the entire process, but in the end were definitely worth it. I kind of wondered to myself once I was done if it would have been easier just to tape off the edges with some masking tape and hit them with a spray paint. But ultimately, I just spent the time and went through painting on each of these individual window frames and dry brushing as much copper as I could onto the bars in the window themselves. Then continuing this around the entire building and on the interior as well. Once I'd finished the bronzing on the first layer, I grabbed out that same cold grey from Vallejo Game Air and did a coat over this lower section of brick. It gives a nice element of differentiation and there is a clear line where the brick shifts on the first layer. I also use this grey to coat the pillars to give them a little bit of separation from the grey sandstone. Then continuing this grey around the base of the first floor of this building. And now to match what I did in the tower, I'm gonna to paint all of the floor bases on the inside with a gray primer from Vallejo. I'll then mix this up with the same Game Ink Cold Gray to give a bit more variation before moving on to all of these edges for the second floor. This time coming straight in with the copper rather than painting a layer of silver first. And again, taking my time to paint in all of the copper elements onto the window frames. As well as going over all of these areas with copper that will be my first printed pieces of the roof. And highlighting a couple of the elements with a Warlock's Bronze from Citadel. And so far we've got a good chunk of this building together, but I have one last print to finish off. And unfortunately I had an issue with my printer where the head had slipped. So as you see here, the elements of the base aren't quite lined up to the top and the whole thing just pulls apart. So I'm going to have to reprint this piece, but I will probably be able to use these pieces for some scraps in the future to make some kind of kit bash out of. I'll skip over the part where I printed out a proper copy and painted it using the exact same method as all of the other floors and jump right up to this section where I'm going to glue everything together. I'm using gel super glue to help fill in any gaps and make sure that this stuff doesn't just leak out all over the table. I'm also doing this on a glass top table with a bit of baking paper underneath to try and keep the base as flat as possible. Once I'm happy with the positioning, I give it a spray with a super glue accelerant so I don't have to sit there holding it till it dries. I then go around and repeat this same process on all of the other elements of the build, gluing all of the sections from each floor together but keeping the floors themselves separate so that I can pile them up and take them apart later on and use the interior of this for gaming. There are a few small gaps between some of these sections once they were glued together so I came in and filled those up with a bit of filler putty. These wood fills are easy to get from most hardware stores and work great to fill in these kinds of gaps. Once they're dry, you can sand them back 
or just paint straight over them like I did using that same cold grey by Vallejo Game Air. And now we have our finished models. Sure, the painting could leave a little bit to be desired, and I haven't gone over them with any kind of wash, which would add an entirely new element, but I am more than happy with these to be a piece of terrain on my game table. I absolutely love these models from Printable Scenery, and they're gonna go great amongst my collection of other printed pieces from their sets. I've supported the Hagglethorne Hollow Kickstarter in the past, and also bought a few of their ships. I'm not the only one working on this set, with my mate Cody from Of Dice and Magic doing a couple of these of his own. Between my models and his, as well as all the other pieces that I've got printed out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to put together quite an awesome game table. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if there's anything else you'd like to see me make in the future, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, never stop making stuff.